detailed examination of the Day of Atonement rituals according to the Temple Scrolls. Introduction The Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, is a cornerstone of Jewish ritual practice, deeply embedded in the religious and spiritual life of the community. The Temple Scrolls, alongside Leviticus 16 and 23, provide a comprehensive guide to the rituals and observances of this sacred day. This essay explores the detailed instructions for the High Priest on the Day of Atonement, focusing on preparatory activities, main rituals, purification procedures, and post-ritual observances. 1. Preparatory Activities 9th of Tishri 1.1 Sanctification of the Temple the sanctification of the temple on the ninth of Tishri is a foundational step for the Day of Atonement. This process ensures that the sacred space is cleansed and prepared for the High Holy Day's rituals. Preparation Before beginning the ritual, the High Priest must gather all necessary materials for purification, including water, ashes, and specific ritual implements. The temple must be inspected thoroughly for any signs of impurity, which might include physical dirt, ritual contamination, or any other factors that could desecrate the sacred space. Procedure The actual sanctification involves several steps. First, the temple and altar are cleansed through ritual purification processes. This may involve sprinkling with purifying water or the use of ritual ashes to symbolically remove impurities. The goal is to ensure that both the temple and the altar are spiritually and ritually pure which is crucial for the efficacy of the Day of Atonement rituals. This preparation aligns with the broader principle in Jewish law that sacred spaces must be in a state of purity before engaging in significant religious acts. 1.2 Preparation of Sacrifices The preparation of sacrifices is a critical element of the Day of Atonement observance, ensuring that the ritual offerings are suitable and properly prepared. Selection and Inspection the high priest must select animals for the sacrifices, including sin offerings and burnt offerings. These animals must be without blemish, as any imperfection could render the sacrifice unacceptable. Each animal is meticulously inspected to confirm its suitability, following strict guidelines to maintain ritual integrity. Preparation Once selected, the animals are prepared according to the detailed instructions laid out in the Temple Scrolls and Leviticus. This includes specific methods of slaughtering and handling the blood, which is central to the atonement process. Proper preparation ensures that the sacrifices are valid and that their ritual significance is fully realized. 2. Main Ritual Actions 10th of Tishri 2.1 Role of the High Priest The High Priest plays a central role in the rituals of the Day of Atonement, executing key actions that are essential for the atonement process. Sacrificial Slaughter the high priest begins by slaughtering the sin offerings and burnt offerings. This act is performed in a specific manner to ensure that the blood is collected and handled properly. The high priest must follow precise procedures to maintain ritual purity and effectiveness. Application of Blood The blood collected from the sacrifices is applied to various parts of the altar and the temple. According to Leviticus 16 verses 15 to 16, the blood is used to cleanse the altar of the sins of the people. It is also sprinkled in the Holy of Holies, on the mercy seat, to atone for the people's sins and purify the inner sanctuary. This application of blood symbolizes the transfer of sins from the community to the sacred space, thereby purifying both the people and the temple. 2.2 Scapegoat Ritual The scapegoat ritual is a unique and symbolic practice integral to the Day of Atonement. Selection a goat is selected to act as the scapegoat, which will carry the sins of the community into the wilderness. The choice of this goat is crucial, as it must be without blemish and suitable for the ritual. Confession The high priest performs the ritual of laying hands on the scapegoat, symbolically transferring the sins of the people onto it. This act is accompanied by a confession of sins, reflecting the community's collective repentance. Release the scapegoat is then led into the wilderness, away from the community. This act symbolizes the removal of sin from the community, representing a form of spiritual cleansing and renewal. 2.3 Purification of the Sanctuary Following the main rituals, the sanctuary must be purified to maintain its holiness. Purification Procedure The high priest uses blood from the sin offerings to cleanse the sanctuary. 
This involves applying blood to the altar and other sacred objects to remove any residual impurities. This step is essential to ensure that the temple remains a suitable place for divine presence and future worship. Cleaning The sanctuary must be thoroughly cleaned to ensure that no impurities remain. This purification is performed according to the detailed instructions in the Temple Scrolls and Leviticus, highlighting the importance of maintaining a sanctified space. 2.4 Use of Blood for Purification The application of blood is a critical element in the purification process. Application to the Altar Blood is applied to the altar to cleanse it of impurities accumulated throughout the year. This act represents the transfer of sins from the people to the altar, symbolizing the cleansing of both the people and the sacred space. Leviticus 16 verses 15 to 16. Sprinkling in the Holy of Holies. Blood is also sprinkled in the Holy of Holies on the mercy seat. This act is crucial for atoning for the people's sins and purifying the inner sanctum, where God's presence is believed to dwell. Leviticus 16 verse 14. Cleansing the sanctuary. Blood is used to purify the entire sanctuary area, ensuring it is fit for divine presence. This widespread application of blood reflects the thorough nature of the purification process and its significance in maintaining the sanctity of the temple. Leviticus 16 verse 16. 3. Post-ritual observances. Tenth of Tishri. 3.1 Community Involvement. The Day of Atonement involves the entire community in the observance and reflection. Organize communal prayers. The high priest leads the community in prayers and reflections, fostering a sense of shared responsibility and spiritual renewal. This communal involvement is essential for emphasizing the collective nature of atonement and reconciliation. Encourage participation. Ensuring that all community members are actively engaged in the day's observances helps reinforce the importance of the rituals and promotes a unified sense of repentance and renewal. 3.2 Prohibition of Work and Affliction of Souls Leviticus 23 verse 28 mandates specific practices for the Day of Atonement, including fasting and self-denial. Enforcement of Work Prohibitions The High Priest must ensure that no work is performed on the Day of Atonement. This prohibition is crucial for maintaining the day's solemn and reflective nature, allowing individuals to focus solely on spiritual matters and atonement. Fasting and Self-Denial the high priest must instruct the community to observe fasting and other forms of self-denial, such as abstaining from food and drink. This practice emphasizes the day's purpose as a time for deep spiritual reflection and repentance, aligning with the solemn nature of Yom Kippur. Conclusion The Day of Atonement involves a complex set of rituals and observances designed to achieve spiritual purification and atonement. The high priest's role is crucial in executing these rituals including the preparation of sacrifices, the performance of the scapegoat ritual, and the application of blood for purification. Post-ritual observances, such as fasting and communal involvement, further emphasize the day's significance. Understanding these detailed procedures highlights the profound spiritual and communal dimensions of the Day of Atonement and its enduring importance in Jewish religious practice. You can find this essay and more at cochinthefight.shop.